Right. Um, made the video earlier on talking about the ransomware attack on QNAP NAS boxes. It's clearly a lot of people being hit by this. And if you want a chance of getting your data back through, you know, and you're just, you're just completely out of options, right? This is a last ditch sort of effort. To do that, there's two roads you can go down. If the attack's still happening, there's a chance you can... Look, if the attack's still happening, I, I can't say anything other than pull the plug, right? That's just instinctive. That's the first thing you do when the ransomware attack's happening. You stop the spread. But there is one channel available if it's still happening. If you've pulled the plug and the ransomware attack stopped, then you do this. It's not pretty, though. If you follow this guide and you do get some data back, you're not going to get it back in a file structure, in a folder structure, without any file names. It's a, it goes into the sectors of the disk. It recompiles as much as it can, and you just get a bunch of files, unorganized, jumbled up files with no file names. They're just, well, they've got file names, but they're just randomly assigned, just numerical file names. If, if that's okay with you, follow this guide. Second caution, this is not easy to follow, right? It's opening up putty consoles, going in through backends and code and lines of script. It is what it is, right? If you get stuck at any point along the way, I'm not going to be offering any help. I'm not answering any questions to people that get stuck at any points. I'm translating a guide that somebody else has done on Bleeping Computers forums. I'm just translating it. Developers, it sounds like it's a developer that did this. They're not the best at communication. It's not their forte. I'm just translating what someone else has done. Uh, and I got stuck along the way as well. And I figured it out. It just, it is what it is, right? I'm not going to be helping. If you get stuck, you're just going to have to accept that this is, unfortunately, you might have to seek help from a professional, I, w I would suggest. Follow this guide if you want to. I'll try and, I'll, I'll not go as slow as possible, but I'll explain it as best as I can along the way. Uh, and just, you know, it's going to be different for every person. It's not going to be the same procedure. Certain lines are going to be different for every person based on their NAS device, based on their situation. It's just how it is. There's no step-by-step -step guide for this that's going to work for everybody. You're going to ha If you're not capable of adapting certain bits that might be different for you, then it's, it is, it sounds, sorry, it sounds rude, but it's one of those things where then it, this might not be for you to follow. So what you want to start with doing is on the system, on any computer, right? That's but obviously you need to make sure you can connect it to the NAS box. So the NAS box need, needs to be powered on. Your computer can connect to it. Go to uh, Windows Explorer, right? What we're going to do is essentially pull the data from your NAS drive onto your local PC. So you need to have enough storage on your local PC to retrieve that data. So what I've done just to test this, just to show, is I've plugged in a USB Western Digital Passport drive, right? So it's a one terabyte, that's a Samsung drive actually, but it doesn't matter. It's a USB drive. So if you've got three terabytes of data to pull off, you need to make sure you've got three terabytes of storage available. It's not going to ask you to plug in the next disk, right? This is code. This is a proper hardcore script. There's no nice prompts to say this disk's run out. Please plug the next one in. I don't know what it's going to do, right? You just need to make sure you've got enough space. So go into this, go into the area where you want to download the data off your NAS. Create a new folder. And then just call that share. Then right click on this PC, go to manage. Then you want to go to local users and groups, users, right click in here and create a new user. And you want to call this new user anything, but I've just called my NAS recovery. For the password, just give it a password that you'll remember. That's pretty much easy to type in as well, because you're going to have to type it in later on in an area that's not easy to actually type in. Uh, untick that, tick password never expires, click create, and then click close. Once that's done, you can close that down. Then you want to right click on the folder called share, go to properties, go to sharing, go to advanced sharing, share this folder, and then in permissions, you want to add the NAS recovery account, click check names, click OK, and then give it full permissions to that share. Uh, I don't know if you need to do this, but I also click share just above that, type in as recovery, click add, and then give it read write permissions on that as well. Share, done, close. Right, to check that this is working, just go to the address bar of my computer, go backslash backslash, type in the name of the PC you're on right now, or the IP address if you know it, and then type in so my name's Ryzen, or this PC name's Ryzen VR, type, press return, and then there's the share there. Double click into it. Uh, and then just to validate that 
this is working and you, you'll need this later on, you want to create a new text document in here. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because we're logged in as a different account. We're not logged in as NAS Recovery, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you want to type, create a new text document and call this right here. And you'll see why a little bit later on. And that works. So that's that share created. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to log into your NAS box. So you want to type in the address of your NAS. If you don't know how to log into your NAS box, that's one of those things where you should probably stop here. The rest of this is going to be too much for you. Log into your NAS box, and then you want to search for SSH. Go to the systems Telnet SSH area, and then you want to take all the boxes for Telnet and SSH. And we're going to use this one here, the SSH port 22. Apply all that, make sure that's applied. And then we don't need NAS anymore. Then what you need to do is go over to Google. And you want to search for the Putty console. That's going to show you putty.org. You want to go into there. You want to download Putty here. And then you want to select the, I assume, 60, most people should be, I would suspect, run 64-bit operating systems by this point. Download the installer. Click the installer. Install the installer. I've already done that. Once the installer is finished and installed, a very small application you want to click start type in putty you'll see putty app right click on that and then i've pinned it at the taskbar open putty and then you want to type in your nas address here and your nas address could be the name of it or the ip address so tfi nas is mine port 22 is whatever it was in your nas client console area and uh, make sure that's set to ssh and just click open that should just take you straight in providing everything's default then you get the putty login prompt. So, right, so you want to type in your NAS admin account here. So admin. And then the admin password. Uh, you have to be careful here because you can't see it as you type in. So you just have to track it as you type. So for me. Got it? Right. If you get your password correct, you should see that. Uh, like I said, if you fall at any of these steps, I can't help you. Uh, you just have to go back and figure it out, I'm afraid. All right, this next step, you just want to type in Q, and then Y, and that'll take you to this default prompt. Okay, at this point, uh, what I recommend you do, and this is what I've done, uh, I went into the putty settings, and then go to the selection and change the action of mouse buttons to Windows. Okay, in the description of the video, I've pasted this text here. This is a collection of text from the original author of this guide. Uh, like I said, the developers, they, they're not great at communicating. I've had to piece this together and figure it out myself. I'm going to start with the first line. Yes, yeah, so you want to select that, copy, come into here, right-click and paste, and press return. Now, for me, I've already typed in rescue share because I've done this before. So I'm going to type in rescue share 10 and then press return. But for you, you're probably all right with just rescue share uh, or just do 10 to see you following me along. Right, the next line. I'm going to edit it before I paste it into Putty. So for the user, you want to take out everything in between the chevrons and the chevrons, and you want to type in the name of your NAS recovery account that we created before. And then this next bit here is going to be forward slash forward slash and the name of the PC that the share is on. So the address that we typed in before to get to the share. So for me, mine's Ryzen VR, or you could use the IP address, but it works with the, the PC name. And then the share is just share. And then we're going to copy all of this, right-click, copy, come into here, right-click and paste, press return. And then that should ask you for the password of the NAS recovery account, which you've not long typed in. So hopefully you should remember it. And then, so yeah, it, I should put rescue 10 at the end of that. Neil, come on, right. Then I want to copy that, come into here, right-click, paste, and then put the password in. That should work. Right, we're good. And then the next line here is to change directory to the share. Again, make sure that's got 10 on the end of it. Copy, paste, and we are in. Right. The next line here is a query. Uh, I'm not sure we really need this, but uh, paste. I'm going to just type this in. U-N-A-M-E dash A. Uh, and that's just querying the status uh, and the model, and the OS of your NAS box. But at the end of mine, it says unknown. So uh, on the Bleeping Computer forums, it was saying it's, you know, it's Linux or it's whatever. Mine's just saying unknown. So that leads me on to the next line, which is 
which version of the test disk application you download. Now, the guide on Bleeping Computers Forum advises you to get this one. That did not work for me. I had to get this one here, which was the ARM-non-Linux version. So I'm going to use this line here. Again, this is just, you're going to have to possibly go backwards and forwards with this until you find something that works. It's going to be the same a little bit later on. So I'm going to right click here, copy, come into here, and then paste, and press return. Right, it looks like it's doing stuff, right? It's downloading test disk, and what it's going to do is it downloads it into uh, the share in here. So you now see the test disk uh, zip file in there. You want to then come into this line here, copy that, paste that there, and that extracts it like that. You want to then do CD test disk, right click, paste, and then this next bit here, this chmod, uh, I think this is changing permissions on a photo rec executable or some kind of application in that directory. This is where I've been getting varying levels of success with this. Uh, the first time I tried this, it wasn't recognizing this file existed. So uh, I'm going to copy this, uh, paste. There you go. See, no such file or directory. Uh, so if I do the next line down, uh, I could probably verify that just by looking in here. Photo rec. Yeah, see, I don't have a photo rec static in there. I've only got photo rec. So if your directory has only got photo rec and not photo rec static, then you want to go to chmod photo rec, copy, paste. All right, and that works. The next line, because photo rec static doesn't exist, do sudo dot forward slash photo rec, copy, right click, and paste. And then here we go. Right. This is now going to take you into uh, photo rec, which is a command line entry point into your NAS disks, which is going to let you pull the data off the disks. And the first thing it does is it shows you the partitions. Uh, now, in a previous step, you are able to identify uh, all the various partitions but I think it should be pretty straightforward which one's which on here. Uh, for me, for example, the disk with all the data on for me is this dev mapper cache dev one. Uh, it's 7839 gigabytes in size. Uh, but you get similar results if you run the tool on that or that or any, pretty much any of the 7.8 gig partitions. So if you've got so my disks are 8 gigabyte disks, or sorry, 8 terabyte disks. So that's those disks. So if you've got 12 terabyte disks, for example, then you should probably, you probably see 12,000 gigabyte lines in here. Uh, it's just the ones with the biggest disk sizes in there. So if you can see dev map a cache dev one, give that one a shot. Use the up and down arrows till you get on a cache dev one. And then you want to use the right arrow and that'll take you to proceed, press return. You want to go to px4, press return, x2, x3, press return, free, press return. Uh, and then this next bit here is a little bit funky. This is where we find how useful it was putting in the right here text file. Right, so if we come back up to the share, right here.txt, this next step is telling PhotoRec where to dump the data to. And we want to dump it to this location here, which is our USB drive. And that's like a little flag saying, hey, right here. So in PuTTY, you want to press down, go to the two little dots, and press return. And then you should see right here. And that's the mount. Uh, you should be able to see it here. Mount Rescue Share 10. And that's mapped over to this local share here. So providing that that's OK, you want to just press C. So whilst that's just there looking at that share, you press C when the destination is correct. That's it. That's now going to start pulling all your data off of that drive or your NAS drive and then into the share. Uh, and if, depending on who you are, depending on what it is you've got, you're going to have varying levels of disappointment. Yeah. Or you might be super happy if you've got massive video files that you just you just need the video file. You don't care about the file name you're going to be super happy. If you're a CAD user and you've got thousands of AutoCAD drawn SOLIDWORKS models, 
and you're hopefully trying to recompile them all together. Nah, it's not going to happen, mate. Your files are all going to come out with random file numbers. So I haven't yet seen this pull out anything that's encrypted. Um, for me, it seems to be pulling data that's unencrypted. But it's going to take a long time. This is going to be an overnight job, depending on how much data you've got. Uh, if at any point, I'll, I'll let it run, and then I'll show you how to kind of go back and then try again if you've got the wrong drive. And there it is. So, yeah, you can see now it's starting to pull. It, there's no order to it. There's no structure to it. It's just pulling what it pulls. Uh, you can go into the share. You can look at recup directory one. And there you go. It's just it's just pulling. There's an inventor model, right? an IPT. It's just pulling what it pulls. Uh, as it's going, you'll be able to see it's, it starts making second directories. You'll see recup directory one, recup directory two. It'll just it'll just start spreading them out over different directories. Um, and you just have to wait. That's pretty much it. Uh, you can check things as they're opening up, right? Little text files, inventor models, word documents, pictures, anything that you see coming out. Uh, you'll be able to double click them, and then you know I'm sure I think these are bits and pieces from my Plex library. And opened up now it says recup directory two, and there's just a whole bunch of 3D card models which were never called that. It's just given them random file names, right? So if you found that that's the wrong directory or the wrong disk, and it's not pulling out anything, what you can do is just come back into Putty, press return, and stop. Uh, press yes if you really want to quit. Uh, press return to quit, and then it'll take you back to the disk directory structure and then you can pick something else here you know if you want to find another one of the 12 terabyte or 8 terabyte drives you can pick another one just press return on that p extension 4 extension 3 free and it'll just start checking that and it'll pull it straight into the same area you don't have to go through the whole command line stuff again it'll just start pulling it back into here that's it that's how you do it uh it's not pretty uh, if you got stuck anywhere along the way you're just going to have to, I'm sorry, I know I'm sounding really rude here, but you're just going to have to find your way with it. Uh, it's, it is what it is. It's putty. Uh, one thing I'll suggest, though, is don't just close down putty when it's running, because it leaves the photo rec process running on your NAS box. So go through the whole quit, 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 and then type in exit to stop it. And that should stop the process on the NAS box. If you find your NAS box is still running photo rec, you can just reboot your NAS box. Uh, but that will take your disk, uh, that'll take the files uh, and dump them into here. Uh, I, I don't. I haven't got anything to suggest. If it starts running out of space on here, I, I don't know what will happen, right? I, I, yeah, you might have to start moving stuff out of here as it's pulling it out to free up space. But that's all I've got, I'm afraid. It is what it is until somebody maybe finds a decryptor for the ransomware. But hopefully that helps somebody get something back that they might have thought they've lost. Um, let me know in the comments if you've tried that and good luck. See you later. Peace.